Thank you for joining Wars of the Roses. As we continue with part 45, The Rosicrucians, Book 7, Some Christian Students of the Kabbalah from the Doctrine and Literature of the Kabbalah by Arthur Edward Waite. 8. The Rosicrucians. Among many adventurous statements advanced concerning this mystic fraternity, we are not infrequently told that it gave a great impetus to the study of the Kabbalah. This assertion is so far from being founded in any accessible fact that one is tempted to rejoin that it gave no impetus to anything except a short-lived curiosity and a certain pleasant fantasia in romantic fiction. The truth is that no statement should be hazarded on either side. In the first place, the historical evidence for the existence of the order, though it points to certain conclusions, is in a very unsatisfactory state, and any knowledge of another kind which may be still in existence is in the custody of those who do not commit themselves. I have never met in literature with an express statement designed to indicate knowledge and to represent authority which could bear investigation. On the contrary, I have found invariably those which most assumed the complexion of assurance were only the private impressions of persons who had no title to conviction, nor even a sufficient warrant for an estimable opinion by their acquaintance with the exoteric facts. I have therefore to say that there is no known student of the Kabbalah, with possibly one exception, whom it is possible to fix at all as the member of a Rosicrucian fraternity, laying any claim to antiquity, for it is well known that there have been, as there still are, several corporate societies, some semi-Masonic as in England, some mystic as in France, which have indicated their occult interests and purposes by adopting the name. There is no mischief in such adoption, provided the limits of the pretension are clear. And, with the exception of one or two which have appeared in America, this has, I think, been the case. The few great names of the past which connect with Rosicrucianism and at the same time with Kabbalism are not to be identified with the fraternity except by a common ground of sympathy. Such were Flood and Vaughan. Moreover, the few memorials which we possess of it, especially those belonging to the 18th century, indicate that it was mainly engrossed by alchemical processes. The possible exception I have mentioned, namely the one case in which a well-known student of the Kabbalah, or rather a well-known expositor of Kabbalistic subjects, may have received initiation into a Rosicrucian order going back through the last century, is Eliphas Levi. It seems almost certain that he received initiation of some kind, and it has been recently stated by a French occultist who has access to some important sources of information that the scattered groups of Rosicrucian societies were reorganized by Eliphas Levi presumably about the year 1850, but this solitary instance does not really save the situation, more especially as I shall establish later on that Eliphas Levi, though he has obtained a great reputation among occultists as a Kabbalist, was not entitled to it by any profound or even tolerable acquaintance with the literature which contains the Kabbalah. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to share, like, subscribe and comment, and if you can, please consider donating to Wars of the Roses. Links to PayPal and Patreon are in the description. Thank you so very much.